The VH4 uses more tubes in the preamp, while the Herbert uses more in the power amp, though both contain a blend of 12 AX7 and KT77 tubes. At 100 watts, the VH4 isn't as loud as the Herbert, which is 180 watts, though it's worth noting that any amp over 100 watts is going to feel and sound quite loud. A small advantage the VH4 has over the Herbert is the extra channel, for in the VH4, versus three in the Herbert. Both amps give you at least a three band EQ for each channel. As I've mentioned, the Herbert drops you down to three channels and dedicates one for your clean signal, leaving out the gain knob entirely. Gain is added back into the next two channels while presence deep and mid cut are controlled at the master level. While it's a higher wattage amp than the VH4, there isn't much that sets it apart outside of some minor tweaks and spec sheet differences. We also noticed that the Herbert is oddly heavier, meaning physical weight. In terms of sound and tone quality, both amps sound excellent and handle particularly well with higher gain levels, which is one of Diesel's specialties. Both heads do a great job of giving you warm tube tone with a modern and heavy bend. But are there reasons to choose the Herbert over the better known VH4? Unless you want the additional wattage, not really. Without that wattage difference, there's little to distinguish the two amplifiers. But we like the VH4 better, just because it's a better known amp that a lot of pros trust. It's also just slightly more expensive than the Herbert. If the Herbert had dropped more off the price tag, then we'd give it the nod just because it would be saving you money. But both amps are over $4,000. Not to take anything away from the Herbert, it's a great amp, but we'll give our vote to the VH4 to get the extra channel and the additional gain control. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check us out at guitarchalk.com.